Vecchio, the CEO of Vistara. Shireen, over to you. Well, thanks very much, guys. Well, life doesn't really change for Bistara Airlines. If you go by what the civil aviation policy or the draft civil aviation policy has put out, Pete Aikyo, thanks very much for joining us live and exclusive here on CNBC TV 18. Let me start by asking you about the big disappointment, which I would imagine uh, for you is, and that is the uncertainty continuing on 5 by 20. The draft policy says that there are three options the ministry will consider when it comes to 5 by 20. 5 by 20 stay as is, 5 by 20 be abolished, which is of course what you would like or the third option is that 5 by 20 be linked to domestic flying credits we don't know which way the ministry is going to go and your pain and wait and uncertainty continues disappointed I think first and foremost uh, I'd like to say that it is not a huge disappointment as you made it out to be I think the fact that the uh, government and the ministry has put forth a draft aviation policy this morning I think should be applauded we applaud the ministry for its proactiveness, for its speed in uh, putting together the uh, slew of uh, action recommendations to tackle known issues that's hobbling the aviation sector. And last but not least, as I'm alluding to, uh, from what briefly I've made out of the uh, uh, policy, it is a fairly comprehensive attempt to once and for all uh, uh, lift the aviation uh, uh, sector in India to its full potential. So while you're talking about there is no clarity on the 520, I, I'm not terribly disappointed. The fact that three options are on the table, I think, uh, uh, mm. gives me uh, uh, some confidence that in the course of the next few days during the public discourse, logic will prevail. But uh, Peter, let's think, be clear. Uh, we, these three options, let's be clear. These three options have been on the table for the last several months now. These three options have been uh, uh, cause for consultation between you, the ministry, for the last several months, and these three options continue to be on the table. But be that as it may, let me pick up on the third point because it's very clear. If if it's abolished, it's it's great for you. But if it stays, then there's no point having this conversation. But it's the third option uh, where they're linking it to domestic flying credits. Now the policy says that you will need to accumulate 300 DFCs before commencing flights to the South countries and countries located beyond the 5,000 kilometer radius from New Delhi. You will need to accumulate 600 DFCs before starting flights to the remaining part of the world. So if it were to be option three, how would that pan out for somebody like yourself? You know, right from the start, uh, we have been uh, consistent with our position. Uh, our position is that the 520 must go. Abolition of 520 will benefit all airlines. It's not just about Vistara and startups. Abolition of 520 will benefit India. Abolition of 520, complete abolition, will spur employment, trade and investment and tourism. Now, maybe I should, uh, you know, uh, correct that. You know, it's not just about 520. If you look at the uh, draft aviation policy, I, I believe there are 21 pages of in all. It covers a comprehensive slew of measures. And, you know, 520 is just one of the measures that is preventing the no, Indian I'll aviation from achieving full potential. I'll get to, of, I'll get to the rest of it. I'll get to the rest of it, uh, CTEC. But let's talk about 520 because that is what you, AirAsia, India have been waiting for clarity on. If it is option three, and you very clearly said that you would like 5 by 20 to go. But if it doesn't go and it's option three in its place, what will it mean for your operations and your aspiration to go international from India? You know, the three options are on the table. It's been put forth for public discourse, for comments, and we remain as confident as before that it will go. Uh, the logic eventually will prevail. Everybody knows that 520 benefits all airlines, and it is essential that it, it goes away to allow the government to achieve its Make in India vision. Let me rephrase my question and try one last time at, uh, as far as 5 by 20 is concerned. If option 3 were to be what is final in the civil aviation policy, which means going international is linked to domestic flying credits, will Vistara India be uh, able to go international, fly international out of India? And if you do decide to go down that route, how long will it take for you to accumulate 300 or 600 domestic flying credits? You know, right from the start, uh, with or without the 520, Vistara has committed to grow its footprint in India. 
and we are we re, we stay true to our strategy of growing our footprint in India all this while. In fact, we have eight aircraft going to nine very soon. And based on the 300 the DFC and 600 DFC, it will be uh, easy for us to achieve the minimum requirement before we can uh, uh, set foot overseas. But uh, I'd like to, to mention again, right, at the end of the day, yes, we'd like to see a complete abolition of the 520, but uh, you are referring me to the, uh, the other option, which again, well, it comes as a, a, uh, you know, an improvement from the current 520, but our position remains unchanged. We'd like to see a complete abolition, unconditional removal of the 520 for the benefit of the nation. Okay, let's now talk about some of the other uh, policy decisions that have been taken or have been proposed in the draft policy. And this one I know is something that you like and this is something that you have been, of course, pushing the government to move on. And that has to do with increasing the incentives for the MRO sector. The draft policy proposes a waiver of service tax, exempting tools and toolkits from customs duty. It proposes that foreign aircraft brought to India for MRO works be allowed to stay up to six months without, of course, being flown commercially. Uh, and, of course, VAT zero rated services uh, that's the expectation from state governments for MROs as well how significant is this going to be uh, as far as the entire sector is concerned the benefits for MRO indeed I think from what I can briefly make out of the document uh, you know I didn't have an opportunity to scrutinize in details you know the proposals but from what I can make out of it I think the recommended uh, series of uh, uh, actions I think should be hailed by the entire aviation industry simply because I think this uh, the slew of uh, measures proposed I think goes a long way towards reducing the fiscal burden of the uh, domestic MRO providers and uh, once this is uh, uh, achieved I think we will start to see the inflow of the MRO activities back to India where it should rightly be right now as I think uh, the Secretary has mentioned in today's uh, presentation at least 90% or close to 90% of the MRO activities are sucked out or is, are, are driven away from the country. So when this happens, I think uh, uh, this will be a po very positive move for the entire industry, not just from the skill development standpoint, but also from the employment as well as, I think, at the end of the day, the, the much needed uh, retention of revenue within this country.